your husband, number one is a nurturer. Someone that nurtures. Number two, every human being is a what? Potential offender. Many wives don't know. The moment you insult your husband, they big to you. We're talking about understanding marital roles. So we, in the first service, there are, there are two major roles in every family setting. The first service, we dealt with the role of the husband, the husband's role. And this service will be dealing with the wife's role. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 to 33. If you are there, say yes. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ the head of the church he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives, even as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife. This is how you should love your wife. So love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. The NIV will say the wife see that she respects her husband. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. So, um, where people are married and roles are not understood, the marriage will suffer. Roles. What makes marriage? Marriage is the roles of the two parties in the marriage. I realize that many people just get married and they don't understand their roles. What role you're supposed to play. There's a difference between getting married and being a wife or a husband. There's a big difference. What it takes to get married is to wed, to have a wedding. What it takes to be a wife or a husband is to play the role. Play the role. So there are many married people that are not husbands yet or wives yet. Where I, while I make excuse for people, say, okay, see, when people complain, especially newlyweds, they complain, my wife, my this, my husband, they will complain, complain, all manner of frustration. I said to them, well, uh, so you know your husband is, is married, he's not yet a husband yet. He's going to be a husband with time. So said, what do you mean? I said, because uh, it takes time to become a husband. <laughs> it takes time to become a wife. It takes one, one I do to become married. I do. And you are married. But to become a husband, what makes you a husband or a wife is the role you play. Hallelujah. You heard the story of that joke or comic, that, that comedy of the woman in the church. The pastor said, all widows come out for prayer. And the woman carried herself to move. The husband grabbed her and said, where are you going? I am not dead. I'm here. She said to him, are you a husband? Don't deny me of my blessing. I'm going now. They're calling for widows. <laughs> That shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. Proverbs 4, 7. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all your getting, get understanding. So we need to explore to understand who a wife is. And to know who a wife is or to know the role of a wife, you know, um, there are two basic approaches. In the first service, we approach that of the husbands from three angles. Because their own is plenty. There's more responsibility there. But this one is just two. We're going to approach from two angles. And from two levels of understanding, who is a wife, a, you know, we're going to understand from a potential wife. That's a single lady. Potential wife. Every single lady is a potential wife. All potential wives, wave your hand. One, two, go. Okay. I thought people would embrace eunuchism. Okay. All potential wives. So, next is practical wife. Okay. Somebody can be married and still a potential wife. It's not yet a practical wife. So, let's look at who a potential wife is. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22 Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord. So the scripture never said, whoso findeth a girl, or findeth a woman, 
or a model or a beauty queen. He said, whoso findeth what? A wife. Whoso findeth a wife. That's to say, before you become a wife, you were already a wife, so to speak. <laughs> before you became married, you were already manifesting wifely qualities. Wifeish tendencies. You were manifesting wifehood wifeliness there's some ladies the way you carry yourself the way you talk the way you do everything there's no trace of wife in you no trace you, you, you can't excite nobody can have interest you don't look like a wife you look like someone that is about to go to new york to broad broadway and be doing catwalk you know that's just what you look like amen <laughs> Praise the Lord. I keep telling many young ladies, you pose for the wrong crowd. So you keep having the wrong people come to you. See some married men come with pot belly. <laughs> Hello, baby. How are you? You say, oh God, what is all this? Where all these kind of people come to me? Check yourself. Check yourself. What are you? If you carry shit, you attract flies. Huh? If you pose like a prostitute, you attract manstitutes. You know where man's situation is? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> so means you have the qualities of a wife. According to the Encarta Encyclopedia, <laughs> the dictionary, a wife is a mature woman. A wife is what? A mature woman. That's to say you behave maturely. You talk maturely. You present yourself in a mature manner. It makes you marry faster. So, there are certain levels of maturity that will enable any, any woman to survive being a wife. Maturity must not be in terms of age alone. Ask a young lady, so you, you want to get married? Say, yes, so why do you want to get married? <laughs> I'm of age now. <laughs> eh? I'm of age now. Oh my God. <laughs> Is that all the reason why you want to get married? I was watching that reason again. I'm of age. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so maturity must not just be about age. So who is a potential wife? Let's look at it before we come to practical wife, those who are married. She is spiritually mature. That's number one. She is spiritually mature, well grounded in the scriptures, well grounded in the word and in prayer. She's mature. I bet you as a wife, trust me, you will have to deal with a lot of marital issues in the place of prayer. Believe me. Some husbands are so strong-headed. Only prayer can break them. And you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you don't have a prayer life. Send a part good. Amen. Okay, she knows how to be led by the spirit of God. And not just by her emotions. She knows how to be led by the spirit of God. And not just by emotions. She knows how to hear from God. Woo! She knows how to hear from God. To be led by God. Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Okay. So she is someone who is submitted to God and to his word. She's submitted to God. That's what it means to be spiritually mature. Talking about spiritual maturity now. She's submitted to God and to his word. That is to say her life is governed and controlled by the word. Her life is what? Governed and controlled by the word. If you put this spiritual quality in your life, trust me, you'll be a good wife. Marriage will not stress you out. Marriage will not frustrate you. Because you have made a vital connection. Spiritually speaking. And so husbands and husbands to be. You're looking for who to marry? This is what to look for. Stop looking for mother. So that your nails are never dry. Every time you say. You can't even carry your own bag. Somebody has to help you carry your bag. Please help me carry my bag. My nails are not dry. Three services has finished. Your day are not dried. Praise the Lord. Number two. Number two a quality of a potential wife is that she submitted to authority. She submitted to authority. To both her parents and to her spiritual parents. Biological parents, spiritual parents. That's a very strong test, litmus test case for what your life of submission will be like in marriage. Praise God. 
Meaning that she is obedient. She is obedient. If you cannot submit to authority as a single woman, then you will, be, you will find it very difficult to submit to your husband. Because the authorities in your life before marriage are a preparatory ground for the, your head, your ultimate authority, so to speak, when you get married. Very critical. Ask your neighbor that is a single lady, say, Alpha, do you submit? Okay. Oh. Number three quality of a, of a potential wife is that she's decent. What makes you that wife? He that findeth a wife. What it make the man see you and say, this one is a wife material? She is decent. Somebody say decent. Decent in speech. You talk respectfully. You talk honorably. She also decent in attitude. Some of us have, some, did I say, or oh, some of you, I'm not among you. Because I'm a man. <laughs> you have attitude. Arty, arty, arty what? Tude. You speak with your eyes. You, when you look at somebody, the person just die. Then you now, you now do your hand. Like cobra. Hallelujah. She's decent in dressing. In dressing. Dressing. No, no, no. While, I'm, while I don't expect you to dress like my mother, and my mother can dress for your information. Glory to God. But she's dressing for her age. I don't expect you to dress. My mother is a rapper professional. Two rapper. That's why we grow. I'm trying to convert her to a gown wearer. She's okay. She will wear once in a long while. A rapper is the uniform. Glory to God. Not one or two. I can even tie a rapper just by observing her. I don't expect you to dress labalaciously. You dress so, 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 mamacious. Everybody look at you. They give you good morning, ma. Good morning, ma. <laughs> in the same way, I don't expect you to dress like a prostitute. There is what is called the attire of a harlot. Okay? The attire of what? A harlot. She's also decent in relationships. Decent in relationships. Decent in relationship. Don't relate and before you know what's happening, you have taken the thing to the other side. If any person, if, if, there, will be, if there will be no immorality in a relationship, it is the woman that will see to it. But if you say no, nothing can happen. Whether you say no, then you go and visit the person. You say, can you come to the house and you go. Are you not a mummified person? Mumociousness is worrying you. Why are you going to the house? And you are two of you are going to be alone. Are you strong? You have a gun or a knife? Praise the Lord. You are cutting. Only courtship. Two of you, your hand cannot leave each other. Only courtship of. That is stealing. You are stealing something you are supposed to be enjoying inside marriage. She knows how to talk to people decently. She knows how to treat people well. She doesn't put, put people down with her attitude. That's a wife. A wife material. She does not dress to provoke men to lust. Okay? She's not, she doesn't do naked dressing. You know there's naked dressing. Okay? She's not sleeping around with men she relates with. Praise God. Let's look at number four quality for a potential wife. She's domesticated. Um, gang, gang, gang. Can't wash plate. Your, your finger has three, three, three colors. Can't wash plate. Say, mommy, buy a dishwasher now in this Africa. With which generator we use to power it? I passed my neighbor. Yeah. She's not lazy. She knows how to take care of the house. Every young lady shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm. She can tidy up the home. Some of you, your rooms are like a dung hill. The shoe is on top, the dress, the dress on top, the hat, the hat is on top, the dress, and the dress is on top. You know, you know what dress is? Don't ask me. Praise the name of the Lord. She's domesticated. When your environment is dirty as a single woman, you are not a potential wife. Don't let anybody deceive you. Your husband may send you back to your mother soon for further home training. She has the habit of taking care of other people around. She thinks about how they are doing. That's a lady. How are you doing? Have you eaten? 
What are you going to eat? Ah, she can cook well. She can cook well. It's a sad thing to know that many ladies of this generation, their best meal, what they cook better than anything else is Indomie. Different type of Indomie. And they go with the Indomie diet into the marriage to kill somebody's child. For your information, you're not the one that cooked the Indomie. You only boil it. The Indomie was cooked by, some, by the company. You now cook the Indomie, you put carrot. Cook them, you put egg. That's the common one. They put big fried egg on top. The man eat Indomie in the morning. Eat it in the afternoon. Then the one in the night, the Indomie with chicken and boiled egg. And then, and then uh, vegetable. When will you sit down and cook some serious, serious... Uh, uh, you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> Wake up, oh. Hallelujah. Look, wake up and start cooking. That's how they carry people's husband. Your mother is cooking. You are pressing phone. Your mother is cooking. You are watching home video. Jesus is your savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's look at practical wife. And that's how we close today. Practical wife. Who is a practical wife? She is a married woman. Please, if you have not been wedded as in married, you are, and you are living with somebody, you are not a wife. You are a concu. Until you are married properly, you have no business living with a man. If you have not been properly married, seek counsel, especially where children are involved. Seek proper counsel and normalize or legalize or whatever your marriage. If you do not have children, it is best you pack your load and said, the Lord be with you till we meet again. Hallelujah. Be, be properly married. You are a, he said marriage is honorable and the bed on the file. Make sure you get back your honor. Tell somebody, gain back your honor. Hallelujah. Next thing you want to know about a practical wife is that she's the only wife. She's the what? <laughs> the only wife. Where you are the second or you are the third and so on. Uh, while every other person is alive then you have moved into contention and competition. And your children will suffer for it. That kind of com competition can cause a whole lot of trouble. You know Hannah and Penina. Amen. All right. Next thing you want to know is that to her husband, who is a practical wife? Now, in regards to her husband, she is a crown to her husband. Proverbs 12 verse 4. She is a crown a wife is a, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that make her ashamed is as rottenness in the bones. That's bone cancer. When as a woman you are a nagger, you are a troublesome, you are like cancer in the bone to your husband. So what is your role? You are a crown to him. What is the man to the woman? What is the man to his wife? Is the head. What is she supposed to do to that head? Beautify it. He didn't say you are a crown on. He said you are a crown toe. Okay. You don't sit on his head. But you beautify him. You make him a king. Hallelujah. You make him a royalty. You don't treat your husband with scorn. And treat him with despite. That's one thing no man can take. No matter how Holy Ghost field he is, he can't stand disrespect from his wife. Ask God to heal your mouth. Let God heal your mouth. Don't open your mouth if kind, the Bible says in her tongue is the law of kindness. That's the virtue. If, if kind thing will not come out of your mouth to that man, don't say it. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. She's a crown. She is his glory. She is his glory. You bring glory to his life. You make him beautiful. You make him respected. You make him feel cool. You make him exalted, elevated in society. People respect him because of you. She is the beauty to her husband. People praise her husband because of her. Next thing she does to her husband, she submits to her husband. 
She submits to her husband. She does not usurp his authority. She obeys him. Very critical. Let me say this about, about men. You can finish your husband on the platform of submission and respect. Respect him, he will become, he can even become your slave. That is what the other girls do to carry your husband. I'm telling you. Why are you here? You are this, this, this. Uh -huh. uh, your husband's name is Iman. Iman. And the man said, uh, every day. No nice name, nothing. Is that a question? Uh -uh. No, when you ask the young boy, he should say, no. Uh -uh. You do things anyhow. Uh, money for market, money for market, money for market, please. And the man is looking at you. No. Give him respect. Even if he doesn't have money. So treat him so well. He will go and work for money. He will do laborer and dress on the road well and, and come back home and bring you money. But treat him well. Treat him like a king. Exalt him just the way we do to Jesus Christ. We treat Jesus as king. We lift him as king. We worship him. Okay? Reverence him. That word submit also means to reverence your husband. You want to, if possible, in that house, treat, kneel down and give him water to wash hand. Some of those modest ones will say, <laughs> stand up, stop. if he doesn't, I'll not wash my hand. No. But inside him, he say, Chai. my God, my God, my God. This woman, what can I do for her now? What can I do for her now? Eh? A woman say, if you don't want to wash your hands, stay there now. I'm kneeling down to wash my husband because this is my king. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! He washes his hand. He will eat that food with, with fear and respect. And see, watch him after that. He will give you money twice and say, so have I given you money? But he tells have I given you money? <laughs> have you said that kind of thing before? You give somebody the first time, then you say, oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't know I didn't give you money. Then he asks you again, have I given you money? Please don't be a thief by that time. Just tell him, yes, you gave me money. He said, uh, Pastor Bimbo Dukaya of Blessed Memory was sharing many years ago. She said, this woman, this woman, this certain woman, calls her husband. Tony, Tony, welcome, Tony. Tony, do you eat? Tony, Tony, see your legs. Tony, just talk to, and the man doesn't mind. He's this gentle, introverted kind of man. And one day she had need for something and she ran to his office to get the thing. And she saw one very elegant, beautiful <laughs> it doesn't look like a cucumber. <laughs> hey! Then the woman welcome and say, Auntie, welcome. You want to see your girl? He's in a meeting. Just give him a few minutes. I'll inform you around. He said that. And she went in, and the way she, she was dressed, the perfume she was smelling, and the way she respected the husband. And then when the husband said she coming, the way she ushered, then the way she came, ah, ah, will you drink coffee? And all that. She was just looking. Hey, Tony. So she got home, went, dressed up, cook, cooked the food, played the table. As soon as the man came peeping, she ran down. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Give me your bag, sir. She said, what is, the man said, what is all this? So, welcome, sir. <laughs> so he went up, put the food. Will, will you have your bag, sir? Is it cold or warm water? The man said, please, can you tell me what is going on here? <laughs> he said, please, have your bag. The man he treated the man, treated the man. Then the man said, ah, but what's going on? He said, nobody will take my husband from you. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> nobody will take my husband from me. <laughs> you are the one that thinks your husband is just Tony. You need to go to his office to help you respect him better. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. She honors her husband. She reverences her husband. She honors him and reverences him. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. Look at it. Ephesians 5 33. Amplified. Amplified is very good. However, let each man of you without exception love his wife as in the sense, being in a sense his own very self. And let the wife see that she respects. When I, when I say respect, you say one. The next one you say two. Are you ready? See that she respects, reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates him, 
esteems him, that she defers to him, praises him, loves him, and admires him exceedingly. That is why Sarah called Abraham Lord. Who else do you call Lord? Jesus. And God was not angry that she called. Do you know she didn't even call him Lord in, with her mouth. It was with her mind. He said, how can I have children with my, my Lord being old? She was saying it in her mind. Inside the tent. Which means it was respect from the heart. Not something coming just by lip service. Hallelujah. Imagine you start calling your husband my governor. My governor general. <laughs> the man said, I'm not in politics. I'm not talking about politics here. I mean my governor general. He may not smile fully. Because men are very, they are very unromantic. <laughs> One smile will come like this. <laughs> then when he enters to easy himself, we say, governor general. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Call it my excellency. You don't have to say my Lord. It may look somehow like no test, old, old Testament. My excellency. My honorable. Find something to subdue his ego. Swallow the ego. Let him feel correct. Sometimes it's not about to say, ah, ah, sir, alpha. He said, you call me sir. What is the meaning of sir? Say it, the man like it. Sweeten his heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. She guides the home. She guides the home. First Timothy 5 4. To guide the home here means as a despot. That is as a you know, spiritual despot. That's you guide the home. You are watchful. You take care of the home. You are the general manager while the man is the managing director. And finally, she is virtuous. She's virtuous. Virtuous means she's good. You can find that in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 to 31. She's good. If we read all that, time will not allow us. She's a virtuous woman. That means she's good. She's of high quality. Proverbs 10, sorry, Proverbs 31, verse 10. It's a virtuous woman who can, who can find a virtuous woman. For her prices are far above rubies. Go on. Verse 11. The heart of her husband. See virtuous woman. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. What does a man need for his heart? What's important? Everybody tell me. Huh? Somebody shout it. Peace. His heart is safe with you. You don't kill the heart with nagging and things that would destroy him. Well, whom be able to God? Hallelujah. Read it at home. Time will not allow us. Praise God. <laughs> 